As you can see, it works awesome. Over the weekend, I went to a Maker Fair and I had my own booth, uh, the Tanner Tech booth. And that Maker Fair was overall very successful. I had a lot of fun. I was able to teach a lot of people about electronic devices and give a cool demonstration of my Tesla coil, which I have recently fixed. Now, anyway, to the point of this video. In this video, we're going to be building a preamplifier using this integrated circuit called the LM386. Now, this is a kind of op amp that is designed for audio purposes. So you can use the at least amount of components, and it is actually very useful. You also don't need to have a dual rail supply, which means a positive and negative voltage and a ground. Well, anyway, this preamplifier board is going to be used for a uh, guitar amplifier. It's going to be the preamp stage in a tube amp, because uh, I didn't feel like adding another tube to make it louder. It could also be used for various other things, including this guitar, which I'm going to show you how to make in the next video. So if you actually want to make this guitar and you want to have it be loud, it's uh, essential that you pay attention to this. Because this amp will take the signal in the guitar and it will make it louder, so that way you can plug it into a guitar amp and hear it really nicely. Anyway, let's get started. Let's take a look at the circuit and some of the parts we're going to need. So let's take a look at this circuit first of all. Now in the circuit we have this little chip right here. This is the LM398. Uh, it's right here. And it has all these pins. Now let me explain some of the components. So this one right here is the input capacitor. The input capacitor is an electrolytic capacitor, 4.7 microfarads. And that goes to the input jack. This is to filter out any DC going into the op amp. That goes into pin 3. Now pin 2 and 4 are just both grounded because that's just the ground. Pin 6 goes to power, and we're going to be using a little voltage regulator, an LM3805. That's going to step down the 12 volts to 5 volts that will power this device. We also have two capacitors there to filter the voltage. This capacitor is the output capacitor. Now this one, what it does is it filters any DC that's coming out of here, so it goes out to the secondary stage of your amplifier, whether that be a guitar amp or the preamp tubes inside a tube amp. Now this is one of the most important capacitors in this whole build. This capacitor is the gain capacitor. Now depending on what value this is, is how much gain it is. Now gain of an amplifier is how much it multiplies voltage. Let's say I have an input sine wave, and that sine wave has an RMS voltage of 1 volt. Now if I put a certain capacitor inside here, to make it have a gain of 10, which is what it's at now, then that 1 volt RMS voltage would come out as a 10 volt RMS voltage. Now, this is really useful because you can change this capacitor to change the amount of gain. Now, in the case of this uh, specific amplifier, I only need 10 gain because I have other preamp tubes. But in the case of my guitar, I would like to put a 10 microfarad capacitor inside there because that would give me my maximum uh, 100 uh, gain, 100 decibels of gain. So, Let's actually start building this. Here are the parts you're going to need. Here are all the many different capacitors, and here is the most important op amp and IC socket. Now the reason behind an IC socket is so that way if you mess any of your soldering up, it's a pain in the neck to get out one of these chips. It's a lot easier just to pull it out of its socket and install a new one. This is the LM7805, and that's going to be used. Now all these components I got from an online component supplier called LCSC Components. They have really helped out my YouTube channel by sending me some good components. I'd recommend you go and check out their website. They have some awesome components there for sale. So let's get started soldering. Of course, the first step is to insert the IC socket, and you want to give some good room on the side just to add your other capacitors and wiring connections. And make sure that this little, uh, little hole is pointing up, because this signifies which one is pin 1 and which one is pin 8. So we're going to flip this around and solder it on. Now, when you solder, you need to heat up the pins first. So that means you take the soldering iron and touch it and then heat it up. That'll cause solder to flow all around the pin. You can then proceed to solder all the pins. Now after you have the socket in place, we can slide in the voltage regulator. Now the pin out of this is in, ground, out. So we want out to go into uh, pin 6 of the IC. So we'll bend that over. We'll then bend all the other pins over and solder them down. With that in place, you can then take the two input capacitors and solder them in place. This one will go uh, over here with the negative going inside here to ground and the positive going to the out pin right here. 
this one will go straight to ground. We can then insert this capacitor right here, which is another input capacitor. We'll input it going from ground to input. After you have all the power supply section all soldered in place, you can solder uh, the ground of the chip, which is pins 2 and 4. After the power supply section is all soldered in place, you can add all the capacitors. Make sure when you add them to align them so that way their negative and positive polarities are facing the right direction according to the schematic. And you can flip it around and solder everything. There we go, with all the solder lines all made, we can then take some of these wires and add wires to the ground, power, output, and input. With all these hookup wires in place, we can now test our board with a miniature speaker like this and a miniature audio source. Alright, so now I have my uh, iPod connected to this circuit. As you can see, it works awesome. It amplifies the sound from this really greatly. Just to prove that this thing's actually amplifying the sound, as you can see right here, we can hear that it's harvesting the sound from the uh, 60 hertz hum. If I hook this up to ground of the speaker, and this is a piezo element, we get a tone. That right there is a direct amplification from the piezo chip through the circuit into the speaker and back into the piezo chip and that is what's causing that tone so as you can see this board works very great all right so that is how you make an lm386 amplifier module that can take a small noise or a small signal and amplify it into a large audio signal it can be useful for many things including my stepper motor keytar that i'm going to be showing how to make in my next video all right so in my previous video i had a t-shirt giveaway where I said that you could just comment something random, and I'd pick someone random to win a free t-shirt. So, here we go. This is a YouTube random comment picker. I have the YouTube uh, URL. That's it. Start. See who wins. And the winner is Tom Bowles. Alright, so I decided that I may just pick another winner. So we have two winners for this t-shirt contest. Eddie Van Horn. Cool. Okay, so those were the winners for the YouTube contest. I have pinned who the winners are. So if you want to buy a shirt, you can just go to this Google form that I'll have in a link and just fill it out. And then I'll just uh, PayPal you an invoice and you can buy it. Shirts are $11 and $4 shipping for a total of $15. Thanks for watching and see you next time.